Okay. Hi, this is Carrie Lee, and I am with the Self Discovery Wisdom School. I'm here today with my friend and guide, personal guide, Stephen Henderson. Welcome. Nice to see you, Stephen. Hello, Carrie. <laughs> And I want to tell everybody a little bit about Stephen. He has a very interesting history. He worked professionally for over 25 years as a fashion and beauty photographer in London. You heard the accent in the 80s and the 90s, shooting both advertising and editorial for high profile international clients from around the globe. However, after a seriously debilitating and life changing windsurfing accident, Stephen embarked on a spiritual pilgrimage, excuse me, of esoteric wisdom and self-mastery. His travels have led him around the world studying with many indigenous medicine people and holistic practitioners from various cultures. Today, in addition to being an outstanding portrait beauty and fine art photographer, and from his pagan Celtic roots in Great Britain, Stephen's taken flight alongside the eagle of a ma on a magical journey of self-transformation and has evolved into a gifted metaphysician self-empowerment coach and workshop facilitator and eco-therapist. Yay! It's a <laughs> and, mouthful, but it's all true. It's all true. It's who you are. It's who you are. And yeah. as you know, Stephen, in the Self-Discovery Wisdom School and in the tradition of an intentional creativity, which is my modality or method to help people with self-discovery as well as myself, we have something called the Red Thread. And the red thread is in many cultures, you're probably familiar with it, many cultures and many traditions. But right now for this purpose, I like the symbolism of it as community, connection and communication, right? And so we like to pass the red thread to each other and welcome each other. So welcome and that yes, exactly. <laughs> and then Past the Red Thread always includes an inquiry for you because of course, even though we are all connected all over the world with this ancient Chinese proverb, everyone who is destined to meet is connected by an invisible red thread. It may stretch or tangle, but it will never break. We all have our own piece of the red thread that we hold, right? Our part in the, the bigger picture. And so as I extend this to you, I want to ask you about your, your one of your pieces of the red thread and that is what is one of your gifts to the world? One of my gifts to the world is being very positive and also, well, that, well that's one actually, so I can't go any further because that'd be two. <laughs> <laughs> positivity. You know, yes, positivity. you have many, this is for sure. <laughs> yeah, but positivity I think is like, it would be probably one of my strongest points. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like always, right, sort of seeing things from a light side, you know, it's, we're in duality. So, you know, it's a choice, happy or sad, which one are you going to be? Yeah. You know, and so positivity, I would say, uh, would be one of the gifts that I bring. It totally one of the many you. gifts that one I bring. One of the many gifts. That's what <laughs> yeah. One of your many gifts, because we could, yeah. you know, we could talk for all day, because you have many gifts for sure. So tell me, where in the world are you right now? I live in Sedona, Arizona, um, which is obviously known to a lot of people as a spiritual center for the Americas. And it has a long history with the native people who have been a place of pilgrimage for the, yep. the wisdom seekers and people who want to do prayer and ceremony and connect with their inner self um, because of the energies here. It's a very, very powerful place to, to, to be able to do that, to actually take off your shoes and connect with Mother Nature and yeah. so tune in what yep. is a beautiful surroundings. So oh, yes, Sedona is my home and has so been Sedona is your home. 11 yes. years now, yeah. And two of your gifts that you are bringing to the Self-Discovery Wisdom School is your practice and use of the Mayan Dream Spell and the Familia Lineage programs, I'll call them. So tell us about those and how you use them. Right, well, the, the Dream Spell I was introduced when I was in a place of sort of searching and I was introduced to the system and it actually blew me away when I was given my own personal dream spell information and the, the information shared at that point really helped me see my, my journey from a fresh perspective and gave me sort of a lot more understanding of self and the makeup of self and different aspects of consciousness and awareness that I carried and I, I, it really 
really helped me at that point. So I got into studying the system. I tracked down some people who actually worked with the system on a daily basis. Lisa Starr in uh, Santa Barbara being one of those who's written the books, read the books, tuned in with Lisa, learned a lot more about this, the, the actual system, and then started integrating it into my own personal daily practice. And then it evolved into becoming a very effective tool to work with other people. And it's sort of, again, as it helped me see my journey from a fresh perspective, it's a great opening point to help other people see their journey from a fresh perspective. And then you get into the family lineage part of it, which is the secondary part of it. So we have our own makeup, but then there's like, it gets more intricate when you look at the connections, talking about the red thread that ties us all together. You know, when you look at the family linkage and sort of what, what issues have possibly been passed down generations through the families, it's amazingly accurate tool to be able to help understand not only our own challenges but maybe the challenges of our parents you know, right. especially if it's a female the mother the male the male or the grandmother you know sometimes things get drunk generation and it, and having worked with it now for with over thousands of people mm -hmm. in 99.9 percent .9 of the time it always brings up some very very useful relevant information yep. Yes, in fact, you, uh, my work with you, I met you years ago. I don't even know how many years ago now, but years ago. And I knew back then, I think we both knew that at some point we would work together because you gave me some very, very profound information that not only affected me, which I'll tell about it a little bit later, but it also uh, helped my family. Yeah, exactly. So it's very, um, very, very profound and powerful insight that you uh, are able to gather. So let's go back to, to your story here a little bit and tell us about your transition from being a fashion photographer in London to a self-empowerment coach. Right. Well, it was totally unplanned as, as a lot of things in life and try and keep the story short because it's a very long story, but it's like one, one day I was windsurfing and broke my foot and um, and then consequently I actually ended up in a wheelchair for eight months with my leg elevated not just in the wheelchair i had to keep my my ankle above yeah. my heart and that um was the beginning of a pretty horrible journey um because i had the complications i had to have six corrective operations over a period of eight years I was on crutches for five years, if you join up the time altogether, oh. over those eight years after being in a wheelchair for it. <clears throat> and obviously it was very difficult to get around. I was a, a location photographer and it's like, it, I lost all my clients within the fashion industry and sort of uh, then what happened through the medication prescribed for the pain, which was in constant pain for eight years, um, I was prescribed opiates for a long extended period of time, sleeping pills, antidepressants. The doctors put me on Prozac at one point, the same time I was on opiates, and it completely frazzled my, my mind, my brain, my phys physical body. I became completely psychotic, and I created a complete hell for myself through this psychotic experience. And I got to very close to sort of wanting to check out of this reality of being wow. so <clears throat> spending days on my bathroom floor just in tears crying and not being able to cope with life having lost my wife my house and everything through sort of not being able to function properly and then randomly i sort of synchronistically found what became my teacher in the uk ross heaven um, through re reading one of his books and found out Ross lived 50 miles down the road from me. So I started working with Ross and he, being a herbalist, bless him, was the support system I needed to get me off the medication. Exactly. You were supported by the universe <coughs> in that one. Yeah, and, and very, very luckily, and, you know, so working with Ross over a three-month period, I weaned myself off all the medication and actually replaced it with herbals. And Ross was a shamanic healer, okay. which, you know, sort of was, I got really interested because he achieved what the medical doctors were unable to achieve 
and that brings stability back into my psyche and my my life uh, within a relatively short period of time and so that then was the key for me to get fascinated with shamanism and holistic medicine and it sent me on my journey um, around the world studying with different indigenous cultures and you know discovering more about the psychology of the way they work rather than the methods, the ceremony, the ritual. It was actually observing what was really going on. And, you know, it's a bit, it was, that was the biggest teacher for me, is actually just getting into the psychology of, of how this was working and how it had an effect. So what's been your biggest personal lesson from this journey, of, this incredible journey of self-discovery that you've had? Uh, biggest lesson for me really was from the psychosis, funny enough. It's like being psychotic. It's like it, it, I, I really got to understand the mind and reality and how we create reality and how reality is so subjective. And sort of it, it really is a case of what you believe is what becomes real for you. And that was yeah. the world I lived in, you know, yeah. like because I was in a very weak place place of fear and not operating on a very high level you know I was I was completely consumed by my shadow yeah. and hence that was what I was living that was what I was thinking that's what I experienced and it's duality you know it took me into alternative reality which none of my friends understood but you know and that's why I lost contact with people yeah. Yeah. because it was a subjective reality and that taught me how powerful the mind is mind creates reality mind creates our experience so that's why it's so important to be conscious and aware of our thoughts and that's one of the things i love about the modality that you work with the mayan dream spell is that you help identify people um actually how they think or behave or move in the world in terms of what their shadow or i'll call it not best self behaviors and thoughts are and you actually come up with tangible words that we can recognize easier when we're not in that place or when we're that place that we that we get out of our flow right our flow of having an ease in, in the way of life where things just come easily for us and the other thing that you do is you show us what our best self or our light behaviors and thoughts are right so those are both super powerful to actually know when you're in because when you're in your best self you're in, most likely in your flow, life is going great. Yep. But of course, yep. we're human and we get out of it, right? We get out of that flow and then how do we find back our way back? You also give ways to get back into the flow. I think that's so important. So, yep. um, yeah, so how do you personally use the modality? Well, it, it is that, that thing of it, ultimately we want to create balance. <laughs> and so, you know, our life journey of personal evolution once we become aware that we have an opportunity to grow here within this life experience and we actually once we apply ourselves you know, through whatever modalities it is that work for us it, ultimately we want to create that balance so it's becoming aware of the shadow yeah. and the light <clears throat> and rather than dismissing the shadow we have to transmute what we perceive as the negative aspects of that shadow into the positive so we can embrace it so the yin and the yang can come together in peace not in the place of shame or guilt or any negative emotion around it and most of the time the shadow is there is this our greatest teacher you know Jung did a load of work with the shadow and it's like it, that's part of my my studies i was one i went through a lot of his books which really helped me understand this aspect of myself yeah. and it, it's our teacher you know it's our greatest teacher really it's like so um true darkness comes light as you know a famous quote says you you have to be able to embrace it as your friend rather than dismiss it yes. and it's a case of one of ross's my teacher's books finished with a beautiful powerful quote it's consume or be consumed and this is referring to the shadow if we do not consume our shadow and embrace it it will consume us and sadly within this world there's many people are being consumed by their greed or you know whatever it's yep. addictions it's controlling them they're not yeah. in control of it so it's all about finding that balance and harmony so we can accept and embrace all aspects of ourself which in turn is allowing us to love ourselves unconditionally yeah 
Yeah, and my super simple saying for that is, happy people make a happy world. <laughs> right, sure, yeah. Right? yeah. Right? Yes. So how do, you, yeah. how do you use the, the dream spill as a divination tool in, during your sessions? Um, and that's exactly what it is for me. It's like, it's not as much about, you know, it's, it's based on archetypes. It's, it's, it's by, based on cosmology. It's based on the 13 moon calendar. It's what pagan religions followed before the Catholics came up with the Gregorian calendar. It's natural time. But it's not as much about the words that are written within the reading of the archetype is actually, as an intuitive, it's actually, I'm working with people and being able to read people clearly, it's being aware of what those words, when they're read by the client within the moment, emotion yeah. brings up for them. Yeah. And then to see it clearly, but not tell them, it's actually to be able to guide them to see it for themselves, which is yes. the key, because then it's their truth. It's not my perception of their truth. Yes. It becomes their truth because they're seeing it first for themselves. So that's the gift of the system for me. It's like a very effective tool to be able to do that, to guide that's people absolutely. to see themselves. Yes. And, you know, that's one of the reasons that, your work resonated so much with the purpose of the self-discovery wisdom school is because it is about becoming empowered. It's not about we're teachers. We are guides, right? We provide the vehicles or the methods or the ways to get this information, but it's up to the people that we work with, right? To have their own discovery and for us to help them see, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The truth, truth is and all power and truth is yeah. within us. You know, it's yeah. not enough right. here. And it's right. important to look within, you know. Right, right. And if you have a favorite dream spell archetype, because they work in archetypes, which one is it and why? That's yeah, a good question because within the archetypes, which there's 20 within this system, um, they, they all have positive aspects to them. You know, there's no better, there's no worse, there's no right or wrong. You know, it's everything has its own energy to it. It's... it's very similar to sort of astrology, but different um, because there's five aspects of self rather than two. Um, but, you know, I, I guess if there was to be a favorite, it would be me, the blue monkey. Because the blue monkey within the archetypes is the trickster. It's the yes. playful one. It's the, the, the uh, divine child. It's, the, the, it's, a, it's all about not taking life or oneself too seriously. Yes. And, uh, perfectly fits you know me yeah. now within my journey from actually being in the place where everything was very serious yeah. it's like it's, it's nice now to be able to see things from that sort of That's positive playful playful out now you know yeah. um so there's 20 different archetypes but the thing is when you do a reading with someone they become extremely individualized because they can be uh, intuited, interpreted in that moment of what is going on in their life. And that really is what makes it really highly unusual. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I want to share a little bit about my experience um, working with you. And this was in particular with the familial lineage that you do, which is where you get information on 10 people who are important in our lives. Um, and we're surrounded by these people. So again, part of the work in the self-discovery school is inner work on terms of this is the human design part on what we, how we operate best within ourselves. Then there's the, the Clifton Strengths work, which is how we are, are out in the world to use our strengths to, to our best advantage. And for me, the familial lineage, it really is a, um, a middle ground because we're surrounded by these people that also affect us, right? And they affect, as you say, limiting beliefs or holding us back from our highest potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what happened for me is you did mine and i must say i come from a pretty normal american family and that there's family drama in my family and dysfunction and you really helped me to understand those relationships and my um my part i guess you could say like whether it's something that i can help affect any shift with or not but more important to me was how it affected the matriarch of our family when i shared this information with her she literally went from having many depressed moments about how it just didn't turn out how she thought it should be, you know, and just, and she's in her senior years, you know, and instead she actually got peace in that moment by these realizations of these relationships that she's surrounded by. She got freedom from the burden and the guilt and the anger and the frustration and the sadness, and it has not come back. 
and this was years ago when I met you. And to me, that was as much for myself, that was such a huge gift of this knowledge. So thank you for that. Yeah, my pleasure. And that, you know, that's the power of, of the sort of the system. And it's, it, there's so many things. It's not just the dream spell, yes. it's the individual, it's whatever's inside them. Yes. And it's like, you know, all change comes from within. So, yes. you know, you, you initially going through that one-to-one -one session on your personal things is like shifting you and your perception of, you know, yeah. your relationship with others. Yeah. We can't change them, but we can certainly change our experience that we have with them. And but, everyone seems to get what they need in the moment or, you know, from you when you do this session with them. And I love that. So it's really very, very individualized. So now tell me, what are you looking forward to with being a part of the Self-Discovery Wisdom School? Um, to be honest, it's getting back to working with people. It's like, I, as we said at the beginning, I do many things, you know, sort of, I still am a photographer I, and that's gone into fine art direction and photographing people and creating sort of, you know, sort of a lot of artistic expression. And I haven't recently, because of COVID, not been doing the workshops that I normally do and working with groups of people. So this is you know, a great way of moving things forward, of getting online. And it's given me a great opportunity now to get back to work with groups of people because I, I guess I've been doing my one-to-one -one sessions online, but it's the, getting that bigger audience and actually yeah. being in service here about being able to share those gifts. Yes. You know, that, that's what, you know, the biggest reward for me is, yeah. is actually being able to get back in service and work with more yeah. people. So yeah. thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, it was the same for me. I was all in person before. And so that was a silver lining, right? A gift, a positivity of pandemic was that now yeah. here we are. Yeah. So I have one more question for you. Is there any words of wisdom for anyone who's in transition right now that you have? Any words of wisdom? Um, in transition right now. Mm -hmm. Words of wisdom is, I think, you know, sort of one of the most important thing is the mindfulness with everything that's going on in the world out there at the moment. It's, it's going a little bit crazy. Yeah. And so, you know, the words of wisdom is like, you know, don't get too entangled in the matrix and sit back up for a moment you know daily practice is so important in these times and unplug from the, the lot of misinformation and opinion everybody's got their opinions of what's going on it for someone is true and it's their reality you know it, so it's it's whatever you believe again is what becomes true for you so disconnect observe yeah. but try not to react as soon as you react you're engaged in the dramas right. so if you can just observe take a breath hit the pause button and just you know see what's really going on for you rather than getting because then the the reality, the re sort of your perception of reality is not controlling you. Right. You know, you're in control of the experience. Right. Self-preservation through the Absolutely. mindfulness. Yeah. 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 So just be, be present. Hit the pause button, observe, and try not okay. to react. Very good. So where can we learn more about you? At the moment, I mean, as you know, Kerry, working with me over the years, I'm not big on sort of um, getting out there in the media. It's sort of, yeah. you have a little, a, you're a little secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In fact, you, you're, you're forcing me in to get a Facebook page, which I've resisted for years. <laughs> um, but I, I do have a presence on LinkedIn as a professional okay. network. For me, and then the art is uh, through Makia Mystical Art. Is Can you spell that? M A K I A, Makia Mystical Art is okay, where. Okay, Makia Mystical Art, beautiful. And, and so yes, I am asking you to go on Facebook because we have a group. Uh, we'll have a exactly. private group on Facebook. So it, I'm hoping it will change over time, but right now that is where we have landed. So thank you. I am so excited to have you aboard for this. If anyone's curious about the Self Discovery Wisdom School, You'll find that for the moment at kerryleearch.com, K-E-R-R-Y-L-E-E-A-R-T.com, and also on this Facebook group, The Self-Discovery Wisdom School. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kerry. And I Much look love. forward to moving forward <laughs> working with you. Okay. Bye.